I'm still on the same topic, so I want to make sure that everyone, that you guys that you get to hear this. What I think will help is that if we're talking about nonprofit organizations or governmental organizations, they don't necessarily sometimes even understand what all the different needs are of women who come from different backgrounds or different countries or are disabled or have different sexual orientations from whatever, right? They don't even know that. So I think one of the things is in terms of a I don't know where, when we were thinking about this before with the, the goals or whatever, is research, that assessment and evaluation that identifies what programs need to do to better serve all these different women and men, and then evaluation of whether or not programs are serving or education is serving or, you know, do you know what I'm saying? thing is we have to be careful because that is the reality. We do not want to set this document up so that we are actually competing against ourselves. Yeah. African American women are competing with disabled women to get our needs validated. That is ridiculous. So let's not fall into the trap that we have to articulate everything to the nth degree in order to be understood. Do you realize that that is a weapon that is used to diffuse yeah. our power and our influence? Because we are so busy justifying every little bit and piece of what it is that we rightfully deserve and we're so busy discussing it and competing with each other about who's got the worst problem that it doesn't get done. Because we're all in this boat together and we have to be careful. I, I'm just saying we have to be careful not to, to uh, allow the process to undermine the very thing that we're trying to accomplish. And That's I, why I think telling governments that they need to provide for research that will examine the issues that different women are dealing with will help in part do an education process to them that like there's different issues but all of these needs are, we're saying that all of these needs need to be met. This isn't really like an issue, but image for women, like especially girls in the magazines and stuff, like a certain body type or like really hair color or something. into tribal or group thinking. That healthcare is a human right for every human being despite class, gender, or age. Thank 
want to urge this assembly and Kawa to break the silence on the deliberation of 40,000 women across this globe on our status. Let's break the silence and make every government official, make every government official accountable to the deliberations of millions of women about how to lift the status of women out of poverty and to have a hopeful future. Here they come and tell us that the way to, bud to balance the budget in the state of California, the seventh largest economy on the face of this earth, is to steal from our children, to steal from the elderly, and to steal from the disabled. We reject that. But we need, we need far more than that. We need an informed strategy, an informed platform of action. And we need to know that this time it's none of us or all of us. And every step along the way that we are going to deliberate from what lifts the bottom up. If we deliberate in this manner and take the very fine work that our sisters have carried out across this globe, we will either get rid of these people who pretend that they represent the populace or we'll turn it upside down and make something new and it's all right with us, whichever one we do in that manner. We try to urge some really important actions and they're too long here to list. The most important things is that we have to, we want to preach something very um, solicitous. The slaves got to rebel. The slaves got to rebel. I hate to say this, sisters. And some people say, well, I'm not a slave. Well, that'll be a different discussion. If you'd like to have us do a plenary on that another time, we'll be happy to come before you and engage that discussion. The slaves got to rebel, sisters. I uh, grew up with my grandmother in rural Georgia and so we had to work in the fields picking cotton and, and working in tobacco and all those things and so my mother, my grandmother sang all the time and I remember hearing these songs but I didn't have the connection and now when I sing these songs or this particular song there is a connection, there's a groundedness for me. Gonna keep on moving forward Gonna keep on moving forward Gonna keep on moving forward Never turning back Never turning back Gonna work for women's freedom Gonna work for women's freedom Gonna work for women's freedom Never turning back Never turning back